Thank you very much, Raleigh. Appreciate it. Uh, no worries. I mean, you know, technical difficulties happen. We had one on a webinar last night, so it's not a big deal. All right, so if you can hear me, if you don't mind, uh, um, Omnovia's got a new piece of software that they came out with, uh, so I had to hurry up and update it. If you can hear me, just give me a yes in the chat box. That is great. And also, if you can see a, a black slide with a black background, I should say, with big red letters on it saying warning, that means that I'm doing what I need to be doing here. All right, so everything's working pretty good. So crazy day in the markets, right? A good day, though. Crazy good. We'll talk about that, too. So it looks like we might have a, um, a little extra time since we were minus one speaker. I'll, I'll get through it. I'll, I'm only going to take an hour every time. I am not here to sell you an indicator, but what I will do at the end of this presentation, I will give you the opportunity, if you want to, uh, to, to purchase a course on how to use this free indicator. All right? So before I get started, I am a registered uh, representative. In other words, I own a brokerage firm. I'm not a broker per se, but me and one of my partners own a brokerage firm. And the reason we do that is to decrease our costs in our transactions. Hold on, my little righty thing here is broken. Just give me just a second to fix this thing. I use one of these things, and maybe you guys can help me. How do you pronounce that? W-A-C-O-M. That's what I use, this little tablet that I write on. And then on this screen, I've got, uh, I got to do a mapping thing here. I've got six 24 inch LCDs. I just got to make sure it's mapped to the correct one. Nope, not monitor four. How about monitor five? There we go. All right, cool. Now it won't ride off the screen. So, like I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a registered series three and a registered series, there's three, and a 30, which means I had to take a test and get a 70% on them. The reason I'm a registered series three and 30 is because I own a brokerage firm, it decreases my commission cost. So what's the average commission, Wacom? All right, cool. Oh, what's the average commissions that you guys pay currently on stocks, options, futures, like stuff like that? What's the average round turn? The reason I do that is because I don't like paying retail, okay? I like paying wholesale. So, so you got a buck, seven dollars, and you have exchange fees in there and stuff, one dollar. Plus you guys also have to pay the NFA, $3.32 or $2.34, depending on what you're, you're doing. I don't have to pay those either because I have uh, uh, seats on the exchanges. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You can, you can own a brokerage firm, which is one way, or you can either buy or lease a seat on the said exchanges that you actually trade on. So there's several different ways that you can lower your commissions. And I've been doing this for 20 plus years and on the days when you're not making money and on the days where you're actually losing money, oh, God forbid, talking about losing money, um, one of the main things that you can do to increase your P&L is lower your, your, your commission costs. So that's, that's why I do that. So uh, I have to give you the, the blanket disclaimer because the NFA, the NFA, and the CFTC are the people that overlook what I'm doing. You will never hear me say guaranteed. You always hear me say um, uh, potential. Now, when they say a dollar, they mean a dollar per side, not round turn. And they also are leaving out their their NFA uh, fees in that calculation when they're doing that patch. So don't freak out. All right. So uh, danger, danger, Will Robinson. You're probably going to lose all of your money, if not a lot of it, trying to learn how to trade. Uh, what we do for a living is inherently risky. Even if you know what you're doing, you can potentially lose a lot of money. You should only trade discretionary income and discretionary income only. This is not to be messed with if you do not know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, um, you can potentially get hurt. So be careful out there. So make sure you read CFTC rule 4.41. Very, very important to understand that. I'm going to show you uh, some hypothetical stuff. I'm also going to show you some simulated stuff, but for the most part, I'm going to show you just real world examples of what I do for a living. Okay. And then I'll, at the end of it, I'll do all live charts, live chart after live chart after live chart. I'll show you where I think you should be positioned. I'll tell you where I'm positioned. I'll tell you how I'm making money and I'll tell you what I'm losing money on. All right. So fair enough. If you understand the disclaimer, uh, I, I want to go one step further. Your trading career will probably end up like a bad country song in reverse. Your wife's going to leave you probably for your best friend because this is a country song. Uh, your kids are going to grow up and hate you. Your dog dies. Your Ford or Chevy pickup truck is going to be repossessed. And your single wide or double wide trailer will be foreclosed on. If you understand the disclaimer, um, give me a yes in the chat box and I'll get started on my stuff. 
I just got to make sure that everybody understands there's risk involved in this stuff. A lot of people, they're like, oh, there's no risk. All right, so let's get started here. My name is Hubert Center, spelled S-E-N-T-E-R-S, because I think one of my grandfathers just got just got pissed off and said, we're not spelling it with a C, we're going to do it with an S. So I'm known in the industry as the guy that's, you know, no BS approach to trading and investing. So I've already told you and tried to potentially scare you off of trading. I'm going to give you a brief history of where I'm coming from so you'll know where I'm coming from so you'll know that I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was born and raised in the, the hills of eastern Kentucky around a lot of coal mines. When I was growing up, there were, you know, there weren't a whole lot of opportunities for me to um, be successful in my life. I didn't have a ton of role models, no real success models I could model. There were about a half a dozen things I could do growing up. Uh, number one, I could have been a, a teacher, so I could have, uh, I could teach. And I was like, nah, I don't like, I like kids, but I don't like them that much. Um, I could have been a, um, a coal miner. I didn't like the, the, the prospects of being in uh, a, a deep coal mine, cold, and I don't like really, really tight spaces. Um, so that would have freaked me out. Plus, black lung is really, really bad in eastern Kentucky. Um, and then there's also, I mean, I had some other great opportunities. I mean, I could have been a meth dealer, which would have put me in prison. I, I didn't think that was a great idea. I could have been a, I could have grown weed or sold weed. Also, not a good thing. Or number uh, number five, you could have been a bootlegger with moonshine. So as you can see, didn't have a lot of great role models to mess with there in eastern Kentucky. Now, I have been fortunate enough to, when I was 17, I left and I kind of went on my own little journey. I was trying to figure out, like, how do wealth, uh, wealthy, successful, driven people, how do they make money? How do they generate income? How do they generate income, cash flow, and wealth? So I will tell you, I probably had the same and uh, aspirations that you do. Uh, you know, we started here. Everybody starts at the same point. And then we'll just put uh, dollar signs up here because the American dream is to make a lot of money. Heads up, it's not going to make you the most happiest person in the world. It never, you think it will, but it never does. Um, the toys are neat in the beginning, but they get old. And you, usually what's the most important thing is the relationship that you have with your family, your friends, your colleagues, and your business associates. Those are the things that really kind of jazz you up over the years. I've never seen anybody go from start point straight to their end goal of saying let's make one million dollars right so um i've never seen that happen unless you're an overnight success and an overnight success in my eyes means that you worked your ass off for eight to ten years and then you eventually made uh your goal now once you've got a goal you better make another one because if you don't you're gonna hate yourself as soon as you hit that goal um i've also never seen anybody do this stair step methodology where you're just going to gradually get better over time. I've never seen anybody do that. And I know a lot of millionaires and a couple billionaires never seen that happen. Um, I am lucky enough and fortunate enough to be in a couple of masterminds where the annual fee is $25,000 a year just to attend four meetings where we all get around and talk about our problems and our, our solutions to those problems. And we try to help each other out and stuff. Um, what I have found by interviewing everybody in the room, which either is a minimum of a million dollars a year, and we've got a couple of billionaires that come in and visit from time to time, is you either have a little bit of luck or uh, early success like this. Most of us had a lot of failure, and we just learned from the failures. And then from that point, we go all over the board. Like It looks like a real weird spaghetti bowl journey, and we try to stay close to this midline until we eventually get to our, our end goal or our goal for the year. So... If you are looking to make a lot of money, now I make money several different ways. I make it in trading and investing. I do it in businesses and I do it in real estate. So those are the three best ways that I know of in, in, in the United States to make some really good cash flow. Trading and investing, businesses, I invest and or run a lot of other businesses and also real estate. Three best ways that I know of. So if you're looking to, if you think you're going to take a $5,000 account and turn it into a million dollars by the end of May, you kind of got a really weird vibe on trading. That's not really what trading is. Can it be done? Yes, the likelihood of it happening is a snowball's chance in hell. Um, so you got to be really careful with your 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 mindset of trading. It's a business. It's not gambling. So, like I said, um, in in some of our masterminds, we have some really cool people. And for the most part, we're all boring, just business guys and, and other traders and investors and stuff like that. So in this photo, you can see... 
This is a shot of me and Paula Abdul. She's about six inches shorter than that. Super nice lady, huge heart. This is Sir Richard Branson. He's got longer hair than I do. Uh, he's also got a, 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 a lot more money than I do. But the cool thing that we had in common is um, we both suffer from dyslexia. And dyslexia, and we had an interesting conversation about that when I was attending his uh, his uh, mom's uh, Virgin Unite charity foundation that I've helped him with a couple of times. Uh, this is Mr. Wonderful, and he's kind of evil. If you ever have to have dinner with him, he's going to talk about uh, 400 to to $1,000 bottle of wine. I couldn't tell the difference, but evidently he could. Um, this is uh, Dave Ramsey at one of his Christmas uh, functions. Dave and my, Dave's business and my business, uh, we do business together. And then this is me. I don't have this little monkey suit on right now. I hardly ever wear that stuff. I have a fleece sweatshirt on, so a pair of jeans and a pair of tennis shoes, and a, and a baseball hat. That's what I got on. I am in front of these 24-inch LCD monitors, though, in front of you. And I've got one of these cool desks where you touch a button, and it will rise and fall. It'll it'll go up and down based on if I get tired of sitting, I want to walk on my treadmill. I've got a treadmill right underneath me right now. Um, and then when I was growing up as a kid, I watched a lot of weird stuff when I was a kid. I was like, I watched a lot of The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman. So, And I always liked when they had those little secret bookcase doors that lead, uh, led to their secret headquarters. So that's kind of how my office is set up at my home where you go downstairs and there's this bookshelf and you pull this bookshelf and you touch this button right here and it opens up into a 1500 square foot office that me and my team come and work in every day. So, and a lot of people think this is weird. I think it's neat and full, cool and funny and it's just neat to have. It's just that uh, I'm, my son has one in his room to a secret closet. I've got another one that's, um, built into the office that I'm in that leads into another soundproof booth where I can do videos and stuff. So I know it's childish and I know it's immature, but we kind of like to have fun with it and stuff like that now. All right, so let's get started. So hopefully that tells you where I'm coming from. Um, the first million you make is always the hardest because you got to get your mind right. And then after that, it gets easier and easier and easier as long as you keep working at it. Um, so let's get started. So one thing that you will learn from me, I'm not your normal uh, webinar presenter. Uh, I do take what I do for a living very serious. I just don't take myself very serious. Uh, as far as I know, no one's got out alive. So uh, we're going to cut up and have some fun, but we'll be serious when we need to be. All right. All right. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. And here's why. Uh, how many of you in here are good, fan, good big fans of candlesticks? Do, do you guys use bar charts, line charts, or candlestick charts? Just tell me on the chat there. What do you use? Most of you probably use candlesticks, right? So some of you use bar charts. That's fine. Uh, I, I like candlesticks better. I think candlesticks give you a little bit more information to go on. Uh, you may be a time person. You may be a tick person. It just all depends. But for the most part, I really do believe in candlesticks. I think they help a lot. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an indicator that you should be using. And a lot of people say, hey, if I could take everything away from you and, I, and you could just use one indicator, what would it be? And that's what this is. All right. So number one, I'd want to just to have a blank price chart. I'd want to have some form of volume on it so I could see whether there was low or high interest. And then the, the main indicator that I'd want to use would be Ichimoku. I'm a huge Ichimoku fan. So what does Ichimoku work on? It works on stocks. It works on options. It works on futures, forex, bonds, gold, commodities of all kinds. Okay. So let's go through and let me first talk about this will be different, but in a good way. I already talked about that. Let's talk about the, the back-tested results. All right? On the S&P 500, the results over the past five years, back-tested with this methodology, uh, stocks in the index, it worked on 430 out of 500 stocks, which means it had a success ratio of 86%. Not signal-wise, but it worked on 430 stocks out of 500. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. And then... As far as signal-wise, success ratio on those signals, on those 430, you would have got a 33% return if you took every signal. So in other words, if you took, you know, the long when the long came, the short when the short came, and then the long and the long and the short and the long and the short. I don't actually like that strategy. That's an all-in or nothing, okay? So um, for me, I don't like to always be in the market. I think there are lots of times where you just need to be out of the markets. Um, and on the sidelines. So 
I'm going to show you a way that if you'll remove the counter trend signals, which I think is smart, and if you wait for a three bar confirmation, it, it says day, but it should be bar confirmation, it's going to increase your return from 33% to 79%. So it's basically going to double it, right? And then some. So that's a better way to trade in, in, in my opinion. So, and we're going to talk about how to do that. And I'm going to show you that. Now, it's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years. That's a really good track record. That's on Forex, Spot Forex, and Currency Futures. Now, you have to use multi-time frame analysis when you do that. So, and the three that I back tested this for is a daily, an hourly, and then a 10 minute. So, we're going to load D, 60, 10 is our secret formula for uh, getting that to work over 29 currencies over the past 10 years. All right, time frame selection. This is really, really important. Do you see a slide that says time frame selection? And then it says time horizon, chart time frame, and cloud extends. Does everyone see that? Okay, cool. So let's go with the methodology that I, I had back tested for this. So when we're looking at this, if I'm looking at a daily chart, then my time horizon on this trade is going to be weeks. That could be one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. A daily is going to give me more time, okay? A daily is going to say, okay, the cloud is going to extend to the right one month. That could be 20 to 30 trading days. Does that make sense? Does everybody follow me so far? Because if I lose you on this part, I'll lose you on the part when we start talking about, okay, is this a long or a short, short or a long? Okay, all right. Now, if we're looking at an hourly chart, which is basically 60 minutes, right, in most countries, and then that's going to be days, okay? So that could be, and the cloud's going to extend three days at a minimum. So in this trade, I'm going to be in it. I know that the cloud's going to extend for three days. So if I get an hourly signal to go long gold, what's the minimum time frame that I'll probably be okay with? Now, it can always go past that if it needs to be, and it can be lower than that, but my minimum that I like to go for is I'm going to do it for three days, all right? Now, if I get a, a 10 minute buy signal on the bond market or on the gold market, then I know I'm probably okay with the prediction of two to four hours, okay? So in this case, there, uh, the five minute is the two hours, the 10 minute is the four hours, so you can just say three hours if you want, okay? Does everybody understand? I always start with the top down, I go daily, hourly, 10 minute, and defaultly what I'll do is I'll say, I wanna stay on the right side of the daily trend, and then I'll use either the hourly or the 10 minute as my entry signal. All right, so what? Uh, this is what you want. It's the number one technique used in Japan. It's been the number one technique used in Japan seven years in a row. It's been a, uh, a, a national bestseller. It's a book that this one technique is, is used by a lot of successful people in Japan. It, it's, it's called Ichimoku. It means at a glance. So you're immediately going to know if this is an uptrend, a downtrend, or if it's not a trend and it's just moving sideways. It's very good. It's going to give good trends and good signals. It's designed to produce very clear signals. It's going to make your trading a lot easier. And a lot of people ask me, like, man, why do you like Ichimoku so much? It's very hard for me to take 22 years plus of experience and go, okay, there, that's all you need to know. It's just going to take longer, right? There's no way for me to take 22 plus years of experience and go, okay, I can teach you everything I, I know in, in 15 minutes. I can't do that. That's impossible. But what I can do is I can shorten your learning curve on technical analysis by going, here's a tool that will make you and I both look at this at this market the same way. Like, do you think it's going up? I do too. Sideways? Yeah, me too. Down? Uh-huh. Same thing. So that's why I like it so much. It's very, very, very good at teaching people and getting them up to snuff and increasing their experience level quickly. It's like a, it's like a multiplier. Now, uh, most indicators are laggy in nature. Not all, but most are. And the good thing about this indicator is it's on all the good platforms out there. You don't have to buy it. It's already installed on your platform. The good thing about this is it's going to give you the past, the present, and the future. And there's just not that many indicators that do that. Uh, so it's going to give you the past, present, and the future. So do you have a black background with a S&P chart on it with a valid uptrend? And it looks like a little blue string going through the center of the chart. Do you see that? All right, cool. Okay, so here's some basic rules. Now, I'm, I've been setting, so I want to stand up, so I'm going to hit this little button on this. I didn't fall. That's just my chair going off my treadmill. I'm going to stand up here and talk. 
because the, ne the next few minutes here are kind of important here. And you shouldn't be sitting all day long. It's just bad for you. All right, so here's a couple of core competencies and core strategies that you got to understand about using Ichimoku. It's great in uptrends. It's great in downtrends. I've never met anything that's great in sideways choppy markets other than being out of them. So number one concept, now I teach in a weird style. I teach in, in like bits and pieces. So I'm going to drill it until you've got it, all right? So if the price action is above, and this thing's called the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. If the price action is above the cloud, it's considered bullish in nature, okay? So just everybody type bullish. And if you take notes and listen at the same time, it'll just burn it into your brain better. So just do bullish or uptrend, whichever one. Now, what this is doing is this is giving you a real-time estim estimate, estimate of support or resistance. So you can see here, it's going to act like a little trampoline. A little trampoline. Didn't hold great there, but it did bounce after this area. Here it worked. Yes, yes, yes. And then if it was to sell off in the future, it should bounce off of there. Everybody understand so far? Valid uptrend. This is going to be real-time support. Now notice, it not only gives you actual current but it's going this thing is going to trade in the up direction and if it does sell off this should be the support where we're going to buy it at all right let's learn some of these actual techniques and strategies of what how you use this thing first let's talk about the components so write down the word cloud c-l-o-u-d this is a cloud if the price action is above the cloud we're going to try to stay bullish if the price action is below the cloud we're going to try to stay bearish. That's going to decide whether we want to go up or down. And right now, I'll show you live chart after live chart at the end of this, where we're in bonds in the 30-year, the 10-year, we're in gold, we're short indexes. This is a really good trend and trend identification tool. Okay? If you've got sound, give me, type in sound. Yes, Mike is good, because there's a couple people saying, Edith saying she lost it here. Yes, okay. All right. You see this yellow line? This yellow line is called the turning line, T-U-R-N. So type in turn, that's good. So you got the cloud, you got the turning line. The next part here, let's do this again, cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Yellow line is the turning line, T-U-R-N. The purple line is called the standard line, I just abbreviated STD, okay? So we've got, this is the future, this is now, this is the present. And then the past is going to be this white line. We call it the lagging line or the confirmation line. So here we go. Cloud, C-L-O-U-D, turning line, standard line, and the lagging or confirmation line. That's it. That's all you have to know about this thing. Now, this is the past, this is the present, and this is the future. This is telling you right now what it's doing. It's selling off into the yellow. If the yellow does not hold, it will sell off to the purple. If the purple does not hold, it's going to sell off into the blue. You had better hope the blue holds, because if the blue does not hold and it goes down one, two, three closes below, and if you also get this little white line to go with you, that's a total trend reversal, and then that market will get smoked, which I will show you here in just a few minutes. All right? Now, let's talk about some of these things, how they're calculated. The turning line is always the one that's closest to the price action. In this situation, you've got a white background, and we're looking at an old chart of Apple. Now, notice how Apple, up here, the price action is above Apple, or the, the price action is above the cloud. Yeah, it dipped down here, but not too bad. And then it, that's a massive uptrend. When you get this turning line close to that price action, you'll have a crossover. So, nine period midpoint average. It's not a nine point moving average. And how this is calculated is the turning line is a midpoint calculation where you're gonna take the high and the low of the last nine days and then you're gonna divide that by two. So here's how the math works out. This is today, you count back nine days, you look for a low, you look for your high in that nine day sequence of time. The high is 465.75, the low here was 434.39, then you add those together, I've already cheated down here, the math is right here. So it's 914. You divide that by two, that's going to give you 450.07. Now, in this platform, it's called UpData, it already calculates it for me and puts it on the chart. Yours will too. Yours will too. 
All right. Years will definitely look at it that way too. Now, remember what we said if the price action is above the cloud, we're bullish. All right. Notice that this price action was below the cloud and went into the cloud. Then that's going to make us bearish in nature. Okay. Now, if we break, if we rolled over in this cloud, if we break this area right here, where's the next place we're going to go? Where's the next place we're going to go? If we break that red line, where's the next place we're probably going to go? We're probably going to go here next to the bottom of the cloud, and then we'll go here next, which is going to be 425.42. So what you can do is you can say, all right, if it breaks 450.07, mm -hmm, it's going to go right here. And then if this does not hold, boom, it's going to go right here to 425.42. Let's talk about how the standard line is calculated. It is a midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. All right. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars. You're then going to divide that by two. That number is the midpoint. And it works just like the nine uh, period midpoint average. So this is the turning line to you are in. The one that's second closest to the price action is the standard line, the STD. Okay. So here's how it works. So you're going to go today, count back 26 bars, whatever time frame you're on. Find your low, find your high, add those two creatures up, divide them by two. That's going to give you 425.42. You don't have to calculate any of this. Most platforms just do it for you. I know some people like to know how it's calculated, so I'm just telling you. So, remember, if we break this area right here, we're probably going to here. And then if we break this area, there's our next target. So, this is target one, target two. We would short it at the top of this cloud, or we could short it at the break of the red with a target of bottom of the cloud, or target of the standard line. All right. Cloud span A, midpoint of the turning line and the standard line, shifted forward 26 bars. So how you do this is you look for the turning line and the standard line. You look for the midpoint and you shift that in the future 26 bars. That's either going to give you the top or the bottom of the cloud depending on the rotation. Okay. Here's another example. Uh, standard line, turning line, midpoint, shift future, 26 bars. There you go. All right, cloud span B. You're going to take the midpoint of the high and the low of the past 52 sessions shifted and that's how this looks like now what you're going to do here is you're going to say okay here's today here is 52 sessions the midpoint is here 26 bars so that's how the cloud is determined okay that's how it's determined lagging line lagging line or confirmation line is the price line closed shifted 26 bars so this is what this looks like this is this blue line right here and all you're doing is this is the price, and it's shifted back in the past. And it looks like this right here. Here's today, shifted back in the past, 26 bars. So it's lagging in nature. That's why we call it the lagging or the confirmation line. Now, on this chart, should we be bullish or bearish, knowing what you know about Ichimoku now? Are we below the cloud? Is the price action below the cloud or above the cloud? Now, usually if the cloud is red, that means you're bearish because the price action is coming from below the cloud into the cloud, okay? Also, if if it was to cross, that's not a bad thing. It's just a it's a it's a signal that you need to re reverse what you're doing. If we had one, two or three candles above the cloud, we could potentially go long on that if we have this blue line go with us on the other side. If it doesn't, then it's a riskier trade. That's why we always want that confirmation with us, all right? All right, Ichimoku cloud charting signals. Lagging line crossing the cloud is the strongest signal. Here's where you want to take notes. Lagging line crossing the cloud is the strongest signal. It's also the slowest. Price crossing the cloud is also a very good signal. It's kind of like the Goldilocks signal. It's, it's not too hot, not too cold. It's kind of just right. Price and lagging line touching the cloud are counter trend signals. Cloud spans crossing when they change color sometimes can be a signal. The turning line crossing the standard line is a very fast signal, but can be inconsistent if you don't go with the overall trend. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right. So let's talk about <clears throat> the strongest, most powerful signal with this, with this example. So here we've got Apple. Apple's in a major uptrend, and it's holding very well. But as soon as we get this 
lagging line or this confirmation line to drop below the cloud, heads up, we now have to be short. Does that make sense? Now, remember, how is the lagging line calculated? It's 26 bars lagged behind. So you would take this, and it, your actual short would probably be right in this area. If you go 1, 2, 3, 4, count 26, it's probably going to be in that area. So I don't want you to think that it's, it's, it's tied up right here or it's right there. It's not, okay? So it's lagging because it's lagging in nature, okay? Now, so how we compensate from that is we go, okay, the next best signal is if we have one to three bars cross the cloud, and if the lagging line is starting to follow and looks like it's going to cross with us, we could, we're probably okay going short. So one cross would be aggressive, two would be moderate, three would be conservative, and if we want a bit to have a confirmation of the conservative, we let three bars close below the cloud, and we let the lagging line go with us. That's a good trade setup, in my opinion. So in that trade setup, you could go aggressive, moderate, conservative. You'd be short here, and you'd stay short until you got one, two, or three crosses above the cloud. Does it make sense? It should start looking simpler to you. So now, does it work all the time? Uh, no. Does it work better than probably most of the stuff you're using? Uh, yes. And it takes the emotion out of the trade. All right? It makes you more analytical. It goes, am I above the cloud? Yes. Well, then I need to be buying either pullbacks or breakouts. Am I below the cloud? Yes. Then I'll need to be shorting either retracements or breakdowns to the low side. Okay? All right. Here's some counter trend signals. So in other words, we've got a massive downtrend here now in Apple. And you can see where the lagging line touches the cloud. We also want to try to short it at the bottom of the cloud and the top of the cloud. Those are uh, short positions that we want to initiate just to make sure. So, and here's here's how the theory works. If we made all this money from here to here, and if we lose money on this trade, these two trades here and that trade, well, that's okay. It's a price we're willing to pay because we've made so much money from here to here. We're willing to give back a few bucks to see if it's going to continue on its way. All right. All right. Um, if you want to be a little bit more aggressive in your in and outs of your trades, then anytime you have a cross, I would not short this, even though it's a short signal, because my price action is still above the cloud. Now, as soon as my price action drops below the cloud and I get a Chris and then a cross, I'm fine with going short, but I wouldn't go long here. I would just go short here. I would go, all right, there's a Chris, there's a cross, that's a short. Here's a Chris, there's a cross, there's a short, okay? Uh, this chart is from Apple back in 2012. Uh, yes, I will do all live charts at the end of the PowerPoint presentation. You can't really update all your PowerPoints every day or you'd not have a life. So this is where I'm teaching you the theory part of how this works. And it'll work on live charts here in just a second. All right, so bullish signals. Uh, price above the cloud is bullish. All right, price in the clouds are bullish if they come from the bullish side. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. Price and the lagging line will often find support at the cloud's edges. Okay, uh, Cloud spans crossing may indicate that, that the trend is about to uh, change. And be on the lookout for thin, uh, thin or thick clouds. Uh, which means that the, the trend's about to change too. So that's the bullish signals. I'm going to take a real quick drink of water. Uh, you can read the bearish signals. They're the exact opposite of the bullish triggers. And then as soon as I take a swig of water here, I'll be right back with you. All right. Mm. There's the bearish signals. Hopefully you're taking notes. All right, so... That is that. We talk about the back testing. We talk about the back testing being hypothetical. Um, we talk about them being good results in the back testing. Let's go through some live charts, okay? Now remember when we're doing it, it's very important to do time frame selection, all right? Multiple time frame selection. So a lot of people will also ask me, what is the best stop loss to use, okay? So the best stop loss to use, in my opinion, is if you're long, bottom of the cloud, if you're short, top of the cloud, you can also use a parabolic SAR, parabolic SAR, all right? Um, Mike, I'll get to you in just a second. So let's take a look at some live setups because 
this PowerPoint is great if you just want to learn the uh, the theory, but let's take a look at some live charts, okay? So I'm going to go right here to this, and let me go just Ichimoku Cloud. It'll make it easier. All right, there's Ichimoku Cloud. All right, does everybody see a black chart with the with the price action going through it? This chart looks a little different. The cloud is blue on up, orange or reddish to the downside. So on the S&P 500, did you see where we cross below the cloud here? One, two, three bars. Um, should you be bullish or bearish the S&P back here? Yeah, you should be bearish. Also, see the confirmation line, how it crossed and it went lower? So for you right now, you should be going, okay, short the S&P, stop loss, and then target lower. Let's take a look and see what the YM is doing. Where's the YM at? Well, ever since it crossed the cloud, one, two, or three bars, depending on your style, that's a good short. And you have these targets. Right there is your next target on the, the Dow. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ at NQ. These are all live charts. Live charts on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, boom, there's a short. And it looks great to the downside. Next target, 36.74. Take a look at the Russell at TF. Russell. Russell's beautiful. Look at that. Smack down below the cloud, overhead resistance, back below, and it looks like it's going to get smoked and go to 900. You see how easy this is. Okay. Let's go to the bond market at US. 30 year bond. Should you be long or short this market right now? Now, notice, now you see when it does this stuff? That's where it'll chop you up, and you need a filter to, to filter out that crap, and you can just use ATA. Yeah, so on 30 year, you should be long. Well, the 30 year is up three points. Obviously, you should be long, right? What's the 10 year look like at TY? 10 year note. 10 year note. Uh, that's a long right there. And it continues to be a great long. Okay. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, that's great in hindsight, Hubert. That's awesome. Okay, here's a trade that I am in using this exact methodology right now, live. Now, I've been in this trade. It is a one-lot trade, which is the smallest possible size you can be in. Uh, yesterday, I think I made $500 intraday trading it, and I've been in this trade for seven, eight, I think eight days, nine days now. So that's a one-lot trade. I'm up $3,078.13. The bad news is, earlier today, I was up $36.25. Okay? Now, I will trail this. But you can do it where it's a very tight stop loss initially because my risk on this trade setup initially was $140.63. So that's on a one lot. So it's great for trends and trend reversals, and it'll also help you hold stuff a little bit longer. Okay? So Ichimoku Cloud again. Let's take a look at gold. What's gold look like? Hmm. Wonderful. Gold's up 59 points today. We've been talking about gold. Ever since it crossed one, two, three bars right here and said, hey, you know, gold has bottomed. It is now reversed. It looks good. It's probably going to go to 1200. Well, I was a little off. Looks like it's going to go to 1255, right? And we've got higher targets. Now, if we're looking at higher targets on the weekly, so gold doesn't usually move 60 points in a day. That's not normal, but it is good to catch that stuff. All right, so let's go to a weekly time frame. You see where this is now crossing on a weekly? Look at it, it got smoked here on the, on the weekly. It got smoked and said, gold's a short, 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 short. Now gold's a long. Now gold is probably going to do this right here. It's probably going to go to about 1,500. And if you are on last night's webinar, I was talking about it when it was at 1,200 going, hey, we're probably going to go to 1,500. Okay? Does that make sense? Now I'm going to take a few examples, but before I take a few examples, let me show you what a lot of other platforms out there can do with this Ichimoku stuff. So we want to know when Ichimoku crossed above the cloud on a daily chart because that's going to give us a good signal, right? That's one of our main signals that we like to use. So if you could have been long gold when this happened, would you be happy? Or when the index is crossed over or when the bonds crossed over? Obviously you would, right? Well, in TradeStation, it's pretty easy. Check this out. I can just go like this and go, Hey, I want to know everything that is uh, above or below the cloud. And then here you can see new below, new below, new below, new below, new below, new to below. And then it'll also say new above. There's not a ton of them that are above. I'm just scanning this in real time, and I'm just going to calculate for me. New below the cloud, new below the cloud, new below the cloud, new below the cloud. Woo, 
Ooh, doggies. Lots of new below the cloud, right? Does that make sense? Now, you're sitting there going, okay, that's trade station. Can Toss do that? Yes, Toss does it. It just does it a little bit differently. Okay? So what we can do here is if you don't have trade station and you don't have Toss, let me show you a quick example of what you can do. S-T-O-C-K-C-H-A-R-T-S. I have no financial gain with this company. They just have a decent little free scanning tool. So everybody go over to uh, sound should be good. Is sound good? Give me a yes if you can hear me. I know some people will always have a problem, but just if you can hear me, give me a yes. Okay. All right. So you go over here to stockcharts.com. And now, well, first, does everybody see how important it is when price action crosses the cloud, good things or bad things will happen? Does everybody believe that right now? I've just shown you on several charts that it works like gangbusters, right? Uh, Ninja has Ichimoku. In the course, we tell you where to go download it at. So watch this. If you don't have a good chart platform, you should. But if you don't, go over here to predefined scan results on uh, stock charts. And scroll down here to where it says Ichimoku moved above the cloud and moved above the cloud. So moved above the cloud, there's only 96 of those. And moved below the cloud today, there's 312 of those. So you can just click those tabs, and then you can let that software, it's like, just working in the background. It's just sitting there going, and doing all the hard work for you, right? Now, if we're all on the site, since it's free, we might crash it. So that happens sometimes. And we'll just let it do a little bit of math there. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for stuff that just went above the cloud or just went ab below the cloud. And we're going to sort this by volume. All right, so I'm just going to click this right here and sort it by volume. And you want to stay away from any penny stocks. You want to stay away from uh, exchanges over the counter market. You want to do that. You want to, tra you want to trade, you know, the Amex. You want to trade NYSE, you know, stuff like that, NASDAQ. So those are the type of stuff that you want to trade. Now, we're going to sort this by volume. Here's the London Exchange. You can trade that one. Um, let's see if we can find one that's got a decent price here. Okay, that's LSC. Trying to see a lot. This is one's above the cloud, so we're not going to have a really good list of those just because there's not. So there is Velocity Shares. There's not a great bunch of good longs. See how all these are penny stocks? Um, there's the Vanguard Short-Term Inflation Protected Securities. Mm, no, you don't have a lot of good longs right now, which is which is about what you you would expect. Mm, nope. So you don't have a lot of good longs, which that's basically what it should say, right? Nobody today crossed above the cloud. All right. Let's see. Oh, Kellogg's. What what is Kellogg's symbol? Is, me, was there Kellogg's in there? I didn't see Kellogg. What was the Kellogg's? Okay. Okay. Let me just see if I can do K here real quick on my trade station. Yeah. I didn't see K. Oh, it's not. Uh, yeah, it went newly above. It was below the cloud there, and now it's above. So there's Kellogg's. So, yeah, Kellogg's one. I just missed it. All right. Now let's go back over here and do the short scans. Okay. Short scans are right here. And now we can sort by volume. GLD ETF. Yeah, that's the same one. All right. So we're going to go by volume. And now if you don't have charts that can do this, this free platform will do it for you too. Let's just do, let it do its little math real quick here. Mm -hmm. This is available on stock charts. Does it give a full view of what you're discussing today? Uh, yeah, it's free. I, I don't. I'm not a paying member of stock charts. I'm just using the free version. And you just go over to stockcharts.com, and then you guys have to go to predefined scan results, and then you have to scan for moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. And I teach this all this in the course. So it's having a problem because we're all on the, on the website. See how it's spinning, doing that little thing here? So once you do that, if you go um, and filter it by volume, then what you're looking for is stuff. There you go, Dr. Pepper, DPS. All right, so Dr. Pepper. So let's click this one right here. That's our chart button. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build this out, and we're going to say, okay, I want this to be Ichimoku full. And then I don't really want to have anything else in here just because I don't want any, any confusion. But you can add other stuff if you want. I usually use the, use the ADX and the parabolic SAR to help me do stuff like that. And then we'll just go, okay, um, update. Bink. There you go. So DPS broke below Dr. Pepper, Snapple Group, as a new useful. Yes, it means Dr. Pepper is probably in a new downtrend and it's going to get smoked to the downside just like everything else and go back down here and now we've filtered for move below the cloud 
Here you've got, uh, let's see here, Coca-Cola. There's Coke. Coke's going to get smoked. Johnson & Johnson, JCPenney, um, Bank, GLW, Corning, uh, Honeywell. You see how that works? Now, you can chart it on stock charts. I don't, though, because I have a decent... I have decent charting platforms, but there is a way that you can do it. And I just showed you how to do it right there. But you can do that on, on everything else. Look, J and J. Look at there. J and J is below. What do we do? Honeywell, H O N. Honeywell, back below the cloud, right? So I'm going to take a few seconds here and just take recommendations from you. Now, I usually use uh, a couple of other things with Ichimoku. I'll do, I call it the power play, where I'll do parabolics and stuff like that. But I'm just going to use Ichi today. Now, you give me some symbols. Make sure that the cap locks are on. I go D-U-S-T. I can't do it for all of you, but I'll do it for some of you. Dust is a good short. Stop 930, 938, target zero. SPY is the same thing as the Dagon uh, uh, S&P futures. It is a short with a target of 175 and a, target, and a stop of 187. D-I-S. Disney. Short target 75, stop 9149. Caterpillar, oh, I didn't type that right. Did I, yeah, oh, no, C A T. Caterpillar is a short. It's below the cloud. Stop of sixty three forty. Target would be fifty five ninety four. A A P. A A P is a short with a stop of one forty three and a target of one twenty. Uh, J P Morgan. J P Morgan is a short with a stop of fifty six thirty six and a target of fifty. How do you do your target? So I cover that in the course, but I will show you kind of how I'm doing that. So if I know I'm short here, like this, let's say I'm short at 53.53, right, which is the price that's trading at now. And if I know that my stop loss is that yellow line, right, that's a, that's a risk box of that width. Then I know I'm going to go for one, two, or three risk bubbles. So if my risk is that, my reward had better be in the area of $46. That's how I do that stuff. What do you think about selling credit uh, premiums on puts and calls, naked spreads using this method? Gives you some cushion and advantage of collecting time to late. It's the word fine, Ken. It works great on, on tons of stuff. Like if you're going to do weekly options, I would do a 60-minute chart. If you're going to do, well, actually, yeah, if you're doing weekly options, I would do a 60-minute chart. Yeah. If you're doing monthlies, I would use dailies yeah, for that example. Uh, PG. PG is a good long with a stop of 78.73 and a target of about $84. How much of this is rated related to oil sell? How much of how much is all this related to oil sell off USO? I could not tell you. I don't do the macroeconomics of what causes the market to sell off. I just go the market's going down, we should be short. Uh USO is probably going to go to 6 bucks. Yeah. Apple, A-A-P-L. Apple is a great short with a stop of 97.38, target $80. What are your settings for the cloud? They're super, super secret. They're the defaults. It's, they're the defaults. And it is, um, they are as standard right here. It is 9.26.52.26 true, 26.65 true, azure, orange, Orange, dark blue, blue, dark red, red, dark gray. That's it. Amazon, A-M-Z-N. Amazon is a great short. It's been a short ever since it broke below the cloud here. Stop of 527, target $400. Can you do intraday chart of the TF? So what I would do on that, and for the multi-time frame analysis, I do it like this right here. So for the TF, at TF, there is the 60-minute sell signal on the Russell. You can see there's the there's the 60-minute sell-off. Good for one, two, three days. Huh, and it revisits the cloud just like it was supposed to. That's on a 60-minute. On a 10-minute sell signal, how long does a 10-minute usually good for? Does anybody remember? So here's a 10-minute sell signal, and it was good for how many hours? You remember from the PowerPoint? What was it? Yeah, four hours. So it lasted uh, more than four hours. Then it revisited the cloud, and then it went back down again. Look, about to get another sell signal right there. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go back over here to the cloud. TSN. 
Tyson Foods, good looking long. I'd be long right now with a stop of $56.91 and a target of $70. FIT, Fitbit, great looking little short. Fitbit's good, been a great short ever since it broke below the cloud here and it's going substantially lower. You see how easy this is. I'm not saying it, it makes you're going to make a billion dollars with it. Do you see how easy it is to do your analysis with this methodology? You still have to place the trades. You still have to place the trades. You have to be willing to take some stop losses, and you have to be willing to let things ride. Don't choke out your trades. Don't choke them to death. Let them run a little bit. Uh, just entered the webinar, 30-year bond. No. 30-year um, bonds is the at US. It's a great long. It, uh, we're calling for it to go to 172. It'll probably get there in the next couple of days. Would you be able to do an example in the Forex market? Sure. Let's go at EC. Here's the Euro dollar. Uh, Euro dollar is a great long target 116. It's been a great long ever since uh, six days ago. Yep. All right. So I'm going to get back to my PowerPoint here real quickly. I'm going to make you an offer and then I'll f finish the rest of the time with just Q&A. Okay. Where in Eastern Kentucky are you from? Paintsville, Johnson County. Currently, I live right outside of Lexington in Versailles. All right, so uh, best stops to use. I did that. Family from Hazard. Oh, cool. Right up the road. Uh, trade setups. Look at some live charts. Is everybody satisfied with the live chart? Look, I'll come back and do it if I've got time. I just don't want to mess up their, their clock. I got, it looks like I got 10 more minutes, okay? 10 more minutes. All right. Success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade and made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again where I took profit earlier today after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during the course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler, Mary. Dude, thanks. You are likely the only reason I have kept at this with trading, and now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was a really great, and I can't wait to attend the gold trading class. Thank you so much for all you do. Here's one from Ron. Webinar series was a great experience. Very informative, educational, lots of fun. But that's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities and great values. So I'm asking you if you want to be one of our potential future success stories. So I'm inviting you to join us. Now let me talk about who this is for. You've got to have some realistic expectations. If you are serious about making real money in the markets, if you are looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and don't go crazy on me, and if you know and understand that your success is actually tied to you taking action and not me taking action, I can't trade for you. I can show you what I'm doing, and you can either follow that or, or shadow that or do better or worse than that, but I can't do your trades for you. So you got to take a little bit of responsibility there. All right. Now, who is this not for? If you are a holy grail seeker, if you think you're going to take a $5,000 account and by May turn it into a million dollars, very unrealistic expectation. That's not what this is. This is trading. We call this trading. We don't call this guaranteed cash flow generation with no risk. It's called trading. Same way fishermen don't call fishing catching. And the same way hunters don't call hunting killing, right? So you got to have some realistic expectations. If you suffer from hoping, like what I just said earlier, I'm probably not your guy. Um, if, you, if you suffer from guru-itis, if you follow me and 9,000 other guys online, pick one or two of us and stick with us so you can le learn our methodology, then move on. If you follow too many people at the same time, we're all going to have different opinions on different time frames, okay? All right. Uh, Grail, yeah, Gail. And I'm dyslexic, so I did not catch the... Holy Gale seekers. So if you suffer from a Holy Grail syndrome, or if you suffer from the Holy Gale seeker syndrome, it's not for you. Right? <laughs> and if you're going to bust my balls because I, I spelled something wrong, we're probably going to get along just fine. That means we'll get along perfect. All right? So if, if you can't make a decision, obviously, it's not for you. And if you like to make things more complicated for no good reason, it's probably not for you. Right? So... And I, I can give it just as well as I take it. So I, I've got a relatively thick skin, so no worries. I'm pretty transparent in my life. I pretty much show people like what I do on a daily basis, whether it works good, bad, or indifferent, right? So uh, there's three types of people in the world. Uh, those of us uh, that uh, make things happen, 
those of us that watch things happen and those of us that ask what just happened. Hopefully you're in the top two groups, all right? So here's a fraction of what you'll learn in the number one best-selling Ichimoku course on the market in the United States. I don't own the one in Japan. Somebody else does. So the number one best-selling Ichimoku course in the United States. I'm going to give you seven proven setups. I'm going to give you my trading rules and indicator settings. I'm going to give you a checklist with cheat sheets, with entries and exits, stop losses and targets, how to scan the markets with Ichimoku, how to filter out the best trades so that you'll never guess what to do next. And I'm going to show you how to avoid some head fakes. There are some head fakes that you do need to know uh, how to do in order to not get your head ripped off. Quick question, why give away your secrets? I, I, I don't think there are any such thing as secrets in anything. I think everybody, everybody learns something and passes on their knowledge to the next generation. I don't really think there's a secret and the world is big enough. There's, I don't really think that anybody's going to be able to do the exact same thing the same way I do. They're either going to do slightly better or slightly worse, or maybe they might do tons better, which would be even better. That'd be awesome. So I don't really, I don't really have a scarcity mindset of somebody's going to steal my secret and it won't still work for me. The markets that I trade are very liquid. So there's more than enough to go around more than enough, more than enough. Um, so that's how I just, that's my mentality. And most successful people, what you'll find is we really are driven to help other people um, because it makes us better. If I can teach you something that I do, oddly enough, I'll trade better and make more money the next week. It's just how it works, right? Can we talk after this webinar? Uh, you can call my office. Um, all right, you have absolutely zero risk in this transaction. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, no questions asked. If you don't love it, I don't want your money. Life is too short. If you take the course and go, man, it's amazing. I made $10,000. I don't like your, your thick Kentucky accent and you cuss too much for me. Fine. Here's your money. Go away happy. Right? So life's too short. I don't need the, I don't need the drama. Uh, I always over deliver period. Uh, my goal is for you to get at least a 10 time, 10 times X return on your investment. Okay. And I'm one of the very few that'll tell you that. All right. So here's how you order the course. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Number one, you can go online and they'll post the link here in a second. You go to hubertcenters.com forward slash pub. You can also call the telephone number, which is area code 859-963-3445. The Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets course retails for $197. <clears throat> How to use Ichimoku with candles, which is in the class, is $97. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars, which are $97 a piece and one day of live trading. It's a total value of $488. A uh, special webinar it, it will be, uh, there you go. Thank you, Yana, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, special offer, $97 for today for, we usually put a number on this. What's the number for today? Okay, so 50 people. So right now there are 482 people in this room. I'm gonna do it for the first 50 people that take fast action, all right? So that is your deal. HubertCenters.com forward slash pub. Area code 859-963-3445 for the first 50 people. I'm going to go back to live charts. I usually don't have to sell this thing too hard. It kind of just sells itself because, it's, because it works and it's useful. So I'm going to put this up here, and you can see that, and then I'll put my chart right here. And if you hit me with some symbols, I have got about another three minutes that I can do this for us. Hold on just a second. Let me move this down here. There we go. All right. So they may understand. Uh, real quick, if you've taken the course, just tell everybody if you think it was good or bad. That'll give them because most people, when you try to sell them something, I do a terrible job of it. Um, uh, and uh, most people will do a better job of it than I will. So there's Denny saying great. So thanks very much, Denny. Appreciate it. All right. So I'm going to move this over here to keep it on my screens at all times. Very nice, Denny. Um, uh, Ichimoku available on most charting platforms. It is available on most charting platforms, yes. Uh, taking the course, and it's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, you'll learn a great deal. Thanks, Vince. I appreciate it so much. Adobe, A-D-B-E. So th those are people that have already taken it. Obviously, they've already spent their hard-earned money. They're getting results from it. They like it. Um, phone again. The phone number is right here. It's area code 859-963-3445. Uh, the course is great, and... 
and he says and always over delivers. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Hubert, for for existing members, can we attend the live training members? Oh, yeah, you, you definitely can. Anytime we do that, Yim, um, if you want to do a redo, it's free to you guys. Yeah, it's no problem at all. Yeah. And if you want to attend any of the live trading or the uh, follow-up webinars, if you've already paid for it once, yeah, we'll just comp you on the second one. No big deal. Uh, I looked at it on multi charts and it sucks. <laughs> oh well, I would I would change the defaults on multi charts. Like not everybody's is going to be beautiful, right? Like my my uh, my up data is prettier than my trade station, and I think trade station is prettier than think or swim. So it just all depends. Yeah, I use trade station. Yeah, yeah. Uh, click and get another. Okay. Um, es. So at es, es is a short. With a stop of 1871 and a target of about 1700. How can we get the indicator on Ninja? I, I cover it in the course, Lance. We show you where there's a form where you can download it into Ninja in the course. Does IB have the cloud? IB, Interactive Brokers, is a good execution platform. They have sucky charts, though. So, what I would do, Byron, is I would open up a free toss account and I would chart in toss because they have it. And I would trade in interactive brokers. A lot of people do that. USB. USB is a short stop of $39.42, target $34. INDL, INDL. IB has charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But IB's charts suck, is what I'm telling you. They're not great. There's better people that put out charts. Interactive brokers is a better execution than they are charts, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, this is a good short with a stop of $10.39 and a target of $6. USLV, okay. This is a ooh brand new long, brand new long. It's on silver, a silver uh, 3x silver. Probably going to go to sixteen dollars. All right. Can you speak to GC at GC? Yes, GC is a long. Last night in a webinar, we were telling everybody to get long uh, before it was up, uh, basically uh, sixty points on the day. It's probably going to go to fifteen hundred. It won't go fifteen hundred today, but it will go higher. Uh, free stocks and stock charts, uh, many others have the cloud. Yeah, tons of people have the cloud. It's, it's on most good stuff. If what you're trading on does not have it, then move to somewhere else. Thinkorswim will work, though. Thinkorswim has a good cloud, yes. If you're trading on a platform that does not have the cloud, just change to some other brokerage firm, okay? Uh, grains, let's take a real quick look at, at corn. Corn is a short overhead resistance, probably goes to 352. At soybeans. Soybeans is trading sideways. You see this mess right here? That's when you don't trade the cloud, when it's a mess like this right here. When it's in the cloud, that's messy. You leave it alone. Uh, QQQ is the same thing as the NASDAQ. It's a short with a stop of 98.82 and a target of $90. Yes. Does TOS give you the scanning ability? Yes, Scott, uh, TOS gives you the scanning ability. Uh, and we cover it in the course in a video. We say scan, uh, scan stocks for anything that closed above the cloud, and then it spits you out a list of stuff. Yes, it sure does. Um, crude oil is a short, and it's going to continue to be a short. It's a short stop, thirty twenty, with a target of twenty dollars. Settings for the clouds are default. I use the default settings. There's nothing real secret about it. Nine twenty six fifty two twenty six true twenty six fifty six true azure orange dark blue blue dark red red dark gray. That's my settings. But they're you know they're different. But I just use the default ones. I just ordered your course. Thanks. Good info. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Uh, IB has scanning. Uh, don't know. Don't, I don't. I've never used IB charts because IB charts suck. Um, use a different charting platform. Trust me, they're great for execution. Their charts just leave a lot to be desired, is what I'm telling you. Just open up a free toss account and you'll be good. Which platform gives better look, TradeStation or Toss? They're both pretty close. Uh, they're both pretty close and accurate. So yeah. All right, I think I gotta go here. Let me see here. All right, I gotta wrap it up. I'm out of time. Uh, you guys got the link. You guys got the telephone number, area code 859-963-3445. I've got to go. Thanks for having me. Good luck with the rest of the speakers. Most of these guys know what they're talking about, and they're good. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Raleigh. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Yana.